While watching the online lectures, be sure to use the attached packet to take notes on. You'll find the link for the packet here at the title page for each chapter. Click on it, then print out the packet. These gray boxes in the online lectures refer to the slides and pages in the packet. Here is the concept of formal charge. In organic chemistry, we'd like to immediately calculate the formal charge of an element. Let's learn how to do that first and then we'll see why we need to do this. So, how do you calculate the formal charge? Well, step number one here, simply circle the element in question. So let's say we want to calculate the formal charge of carbon in this molecule, then mentally we circle him. And when you're circling him, think about this basically. This is what you're doing. Remember, each bond in this molecule has two electrons. So what's happening is your circle is cutting between the two electrons in each bond. This enables you to do the second step here, which is subtract the valence number of the element or atom from the number of electrons in the circle. So let me show you how to do that. Remember, carbon is on the periodic table and he happens to be in column four, which means he has four valence electrons. So we take this number and subtract the number of electrons in the circle. So notice right here, within that circle, we would have one here, two here, three, and then this last one here, four. So we subtract that number right there, the number of electrons in the circle, and what we get is zero. So what we're saying is the formal charge of carbon is zero. And again, we'll see what that means a little bit later, but let's make sure you got this ability here. Let's look at an example. Again, let's try to figure out the formal charge this time for nitrogen. What we do here is again, mentally circle it in our head here like this, which cuts the bonds right in half like this. And then notice nitrogen on the periodic table is in column five, which means he happens to have five valence electrons. And then what we do is count the number of electrons in the circle. Notice you have the lone pair electrons on top of the nitrogen, that's one, two. And then the three red ones involved in the bond, that would be five. So he has five electrons in his circle. Five minus five is zero. So nitrogen would have a zero formal charge. Now, this is what you would use on an organic chemistry test, let's say, if you weren't familiar with the atom and its formal charge. However, to be very well versed in organic chemistry, what I'd like you to do is just memorize the formal charges of very popular atoms in organic chemistry. This will help us answer problems on our exam much more quickly. So let me show you what I mean. From now on, anytime you see carbon making four bonds, always know that his formal charge is zero. Anytime you see carbon making three bonds, then his formal charge is gonna be plus one, and we'll usually indicate it by a little plus on top of it like this. And anytime we see carbon with three bonds and a lone pair of electrons, he's always gonna have a negative one formal charge, and we'll denote that with a little negative on top of him like this. Let's do the same thing now with nitrogen. Anytime you see a nitrogen with three bonds and a lone pair, always assign him a zero formal charge. Anytime you see nitrogen making four bonds, he's always gonna be plus one formal charge, which we'll put a plus right here. And anytime we see a nitrogen with two bonds and two lone pairs, he's always gonna have a negative one formal charge. And lastly, let's look at oxygen here. Anytime you see oxygen with two bonds and two lone pairs, he's always going to have a zero formal charge. Anytime we see oxygen with three bonds and one lone pair, he's always going to be plus one. And anytime we see an oxygen that has three lone pairs and one bond, he's always going to have a negative one formal charge. And actually, let's look at one more here, halogens. Anytime you see halogens with four lone pairs of electrons, they're always going to be negative one. So this is what fluorine would look like, and this is what simply bromine would look like. Now, why do we care about formal charge? Let me show you how it's gonna come in handy here. Later on in organic chemistry, we might be confronted with, let's say, these two species right here. Here's a carbon member with three bonds, which means he's gonna have a positive one formal charge. And let's say we have a BR with four lone pairs, we know that he has a negative one formal charge. 
what this helps us determine is that these species, of course, are going to be attracted to each other. Remember, because positive is attracted to negative. So we're going to know that these species could possibly react. In fact, we'd say the Br connects to this carbon. In organic chemistry, there's a lot of mechanisms. And a mechanism is just basically how a reaction proceeds. A mechanism also includes bonds that are breaking and bonds that are forming during the reaction. And instead of memorizing every reaction in organic chemistry, because you can, it's impossible, there's too many, what we like to do is use formal charge to figure out how two species might behave when they're next to each other. So this is how formal charge is going to help us. It's going to simply guide us. We'll go into a lot more depth of this in later online lectures. But let's look at a sample problem right here. For instance, it says calculate the formal charge for each atom in the following molecule. Well, let's look at this carbon here first. Notice you would see that he has three bonds and one lone pair. We would know that that means right away he's negative one. For this one right here, this nitrogen, notice he has a triple bond to the right and a single bond to the left. But when you're using the method that I showed you previously, you just count each individual bond, which means that nitrogen has one bond to the left and technically three bonds to the right. That's a total of four. And remember we said anytime nitrogen has four bonds, he's going to have a plus one formal charge. And lastly, this nitrogen right here, we notice that he has one lone pair on the right and technically three bonds to the left. And we said anytime nitrogen has three bonds and one lone pair, he's always going to have a zero formal charge. Let's look at another example to make sure you got this. What are the formal charges on these oxygens? Well, let's look at him first. Notice he has two bonds to the right and two lone pairs. And we said in that case, oxygen is going to have a zero formal charge. The central oxygen right here has two bonds to the left, one bond to the right, and one lone pair. And we said that's a case where oxygen is going to be plus one. This last oxygen right here has one bond to the left, three lone pairs. Therefore, he will have a negative one formal charge.